Good morning. What a joy it is to come together as God's people to worship a very good and gracious God. I'd like to begin this morning with our a thought from a psalm, uh, Psalm 98. The reason I chose a Psalm 98 this morning is because in our uh, study in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 10, God is making some radical changes in the culture of the Jewish world, and he's moving the gospel to Gentiles. So Psalm 98, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness, not only to the house of Israel, but to the ends of the earth, for they have seen the salvation of our God. So shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst in jubilant song with music and make music to the Lord with harp and the sound of singing trumpets and the blast. Sing for joy before the Lord, our King. May God bless your worship this morning as we join together in our opening hymn. Please read the prayer in preparation for worship uh, during the prelude today.
The Word of God is full of living power. It is sharper than the sharpest dagger, cutting swift and deep into the innermost thoughts and desires, exposing us for what we are. He knows everyone everywhere. Everything about us is there and wide open to the all-seeing eyes of our living God. Nothing can be hidden from Him, to whom we must explain all that we have done. Let us bless the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us. From Him you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in Him. You were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. But now in Christ Jesus, we who were once far away from God have been brought near by the blood of Christ. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope through the gospel. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. Let us have a moment of silence for our personal reflection. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. O oh Lord, bend down your ear and hear when I cry for mercy. For I am poor and needy, and you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive. Your mercy is abundant to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer and attend the voice of my supplication. In the day of trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Teach me to walk in your way, O Lord, to walk in truth throughout my day. I am genuinely sorry for my simple thoughts, words, and deeds. Turn my heart towards you. Teach me to walk in the truth. Great is God's mercy to all who call upon Him. There is a righteousness that comes from God through faith in Jesus Christ. To all who believe, God presented Jesus Christ as a sacrifice of atonement for sin, and so all who believe are justified freely by His grace. As you believe, so be it. You are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You guys can be seated. Today's first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 23. Uh, we have a God who is with us always, pays attention to us, and, it, and He is angry at those who would use His name to lead us astray. So the reading states, This is what the Lord Almighty says. Do not listen to what the prophets are prophesying to you. They will fill you with false hopes. They speak visions from their own minds, not from the mouth of the Lord. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord says, you will have peace. And to all who follow the stubbornness of their hearts, they say, no harm will come to you. But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or hear his words? Who has listened and heard his word? See the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a whirlwind swirling down on the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes 
the purpose of his heart. In days to come, you will understand it clearly. I do not send these prophets, yet they have run with their message. I did not speak to them, yet they have prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, they would have proclaimed my words to my people and would have, would have turned them from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. I have heard what the prophets say who prophesied lies in my name. They say I had a dream. I had a dream. How long will this continue in the hearts of these lying prophets who prophesy the delusion of their own minds? They think the dreams they tell one another will make people forget my name, just as the ancestors forgot my name through Baal worship. Let the prophet who has dream recount the dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord. Like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And today's uh, epistle reading lessons from Acts chapter 10 is when God speaks to Peter in a vision in great sheets about the conversation, the conversation of Gentiles. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion, in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him told him everything that had happened, uh, had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. The men replied, We have come for Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the, man, the men into the house to be his guest. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the believers from Joppa went along. The following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, You are well aware that it is, it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace 
through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. This is the word of, of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's rise for the reading of the gospel lesson. The gospel lesson is from Luke chapter 12. And uh, Jesus is making uh, a comment that to most of us uh, seems difficult. Uh, and yet it has truth in it. Because when the, the gospel comes to individuals, sometimes there are members in the same family who would reject that message. But God's uh, spirit is still at work. Luke 12. I have come to bring fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and what constraint I am under until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divide against each other. Three against two and two against three. They will be divided. Father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us be seated for the singing of the message hymn. in peace be multiplied unto you from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Let us share the text that's printed for us this morning. Peter arrived in Caesarea. As Peter entered the house, he said, 
You are well aware that when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, Three days ago I was in my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. And then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. Years ago, I was privileged to have the first Hmong vicar in the Synod. In one of our conversations, uh, he said, the only constant in life is change. He went on to become one of the uh, professors at St. Louis Seminary. Now, I know that for some people, change is exciting. For some people, change makes them nervous. For some people, change causes stress. I once heard someone say, change is good. You go first. <laughs> yeah. Change is hard. Peter's world is about to be turned upside down. Acts chapter 10 is about change and prejudice. Breaking barriers of prejudice is never easy for us. Now we know from Acts chapter 9 that Peter has been staying with a Jewish tanner named Simon. He is dealing with dead, dead animals all day long because Simon was in the business of treating animal hides to produce leather goods to trade. And it was considered an unclean business for the Jewish culture. But Luke tells us, the house was by the sea. And in the afternoon, Peter was up on the roof, catching a breeze, taking a nap. So we hear what happened in Acts chapter 10 while he was taking uh, this little nap, catching a breeze. About noon, the following day, as they were on their journey, approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by the four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles of the earth and birds of the air. And then a voice told him, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Oh, surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheet was taken back into heaven. While Peter was wondering about this in the vision, suddenly there was a knock at the door. Well, the vision was repeated three times. The vision pressed Peter to change his entire perspective on how God works in the world. All his life, Peter had believed that his duty as a Jew was to uh, have nothing to do with Gentiles. Suddenly, he's expected to change. He's expected to change centuries of understanding in the Jewish culture that you don't intermarry, nor do you, inter you even associate with Gentiles. So a question for you this morning is, have you ever believed something only to find out it wasn't true? God's inspired word tells us that when it comes to the Lord, wrong belief can be an embarrassing thing and can be a dangerous thing. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve believed that God uh, forbidding them to eat from a special tree was keeping something from them. So they believed wrongly, but still ate from the tree. And with that action, sin and death came into our world. King David believed that God's law about marriage didn't apply to him. He believed wrongly, committed adultery, and was punished by the loss of a child. So have you ever believed something only to find out it wasn't true? Well, that is exactly the case for the two men in Acts chapter 10, Cornelius and Peter. Now, I'm sure we've all heard the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover. Sometimes we do. Dodie Gadent a school teacher for 13 years, 
decided to travel across America and see the sights. She was traveling alone uh, in a truck, pulling a, a travel trailer behind her, and she just launched out and was enjoying the trip. One afternoon, rounding a curve on I-5 near Sacramento in rush hour traffic, the water pump on her truck blew. She was tired, exasperated, scared, and alone. In spite of a traffic jam she caused in rush hour, no one seemed to be interested in stopping to help her. So leaning against her trailer, she prayed, Please, God, send me an angel, preferably one with mechanical experience. <laughs> Within four minutes, a huge Harley drove up, ridden by an enormous man sporting long black hair and a beard and tattoos. With an incredible air of confidence, he jumped off the bike, not even glancing at Dodie, went to work on the truck. Within another few moments, he flagged down a larger truck, attached a tow chain to the front of her Chevy truck, and whisked the whole 56-foot rig off the road into a side street where he calmly continued to work on the water pump. The intimidated school teacher was too dumbstruck to talk, especially when she read the words on the back of his letter jacket, Hell's Angels, California. <laughs> As he finished the task, he finally got up the courage to say, well, thanks so much, and carried on a very brief conversation with him. Noticing her surprise at the whole ordeal, he looked straight her in the eye and said, don't judge the book by its cover. You may not know who you're talking to. So the question is, was it an angel or was it the man God sent? Don't judge a book by a cover. You may not know who you're talking to. With that, she smiled. He smiled. He closed the hood of the truck, straddled his Harley with a wave. He was gone as fast as he appeared. Chuck Swindoll in his book, Simple Faith, writes, whether we want to admit it or not, we must all battle with prejudice. Pastor Swindoll listed a few godly men in their lives who faced tremendous prejudice. William Wilberforce, Martin Luther King Jr., Abraham Lincoln were all victims of prejudice. William Wilberforce stood against slavery absolutely alone in England as he tried to block the slave trade. He demonstrated true Christianity, but do you know what his enemies did in return? They slandered him, and they spread every kind of false story, rumor about him that they could. They said he secretly uh, beat his wife, which he did not. And then they passed the word that he had an extra wife. He was married to some other woman, another falsehood. What he did was right, but he paid dearly, all alone. Abraham Lincoln also took up the torch against slavery during his years as our 16th president. The result? He became the object of of hatred in the South. Some of the stories of the treatment he received from his fellow Americans are beyond comprehension. It was prejudice that ultimately killed him. When Martin Luther King Jr. began to promote his vision for nonviolent equality, many prejudiced people subjected him to incredible injustices. After King's assassination, Dr. Benjamin May listed some of those persecution things that Dr. King endured. His home had been bombed. He lived each day with uh, constant death threats. He was publicly accused of being a communist. He was stabbed by a member of his own race. He was jailed more than 20 times. In fact, King wrote most of his sermons from his jail cell. Yet he was quoted as saying, Love is the force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. In our own political world today, we're watching actions based on prejudice and hatred. We find it hard sometimes. We have to admit it ourselves. We find it hard sometimes to relate to people who are different from us. It can be cultural. It can be racial. It's simply a preference. We can't run away from it. And anyone can be affected by the prejudices that we have. I remember reading a quote from uh, Mother Teresa. If you judge people, you have no time to love them. That was certainly the case for the two men we're talking about in the New Testament book of Acts chapter 10. 
Two men, both who believed they knew what God wanted of them. Two men who found out that what they believed wasn't entirely true. The first, of course, was the Roman centurion Cornelius. Cornelius was a good guy. Luke describes him as devout, God-fearing, generous with his financial support of the poor. Cornelius had tried his best, uh, his best ability to lead an upstanding life. He equated sincerity and kindness with salvation. And he thought God would not ask for anything more than he try hard. That's what Cornelius believed, but he believed wrongly. The second man who thought he had God figured out, yes, it was Peter. This is the disciple who walked on the water and sank. The disciple who promised to stand by Jesus ran away. Peter had seen some miraculous things. And after the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of Jesus descended on Pentecost, Peter had watched thousands of people converted to Christianity and experienced the salvation and forgiveness that Jesus had won for them on the cross. Through the Holy Spirit, Peter had healed two paralyzed men and raised Dorcas from the dead. But, but sharing Jesus and his message of forgiveness with Gentiles? Off limits. It's one that he was suffering from centuries of prejudice. It's what he believed. He believed wrongly. And so falling into a trance, On top of the house, he saw clear as day, heaven open and a sheet laying down by four corners. Amazing sight. All kinds of animals were there. And he was hungry. He was waiting for lunch. And a voice says, Peter, are you hungry? Help yourself. Peter had heard and seen some surprising stuff, but this command was shocking because he was a good Jewish boy. And he was not going to eat anything that was unclean. He just wasn't going to do it. And so God gave him the vision three times. And then a knock comes at the door. It was at that moment, while confused and considering, three Gentiles come to the door and they said, we'd like to talk to Peter. We read the story. For the first time, Peter understood the truth of these words. All who believe on Jesus as their Savior are forgiven and free. And for the first time, uh, Peter truly understood that Jesus was not just the Messiah for the Jews, but for everyone. After talking about the story of Jesus, his salvation, his death on the cross, his resurrection, the rest of that chapter you can read on your own, uh, Peter then baptizes all those in the house, stays with them a few days. And so the book of Acts chapter 10 is asking us, Took at our own lives closely and allow God's Holy Spirit to remove any prejudice that lingers so that we can love others in His name. Amen. Let's pray. Almighty and gracious Heavenly Father, You know us and You know the things we often do when we judge a book by its cover. We ask that You would mold our hearts so they would be like Yours and shape our lives so that we would be able to love others who might be different from us. So we ask that you would continue to mold us and shape us in your image. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We continue with our offertory hymn, uh, We Walk by Faith and Not by Sight.
rise and confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits on the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and His Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, we give you thanks on this day for our parents and grandparents who shared their love of Jesus with us so that we too might enjoy your gifts in eternity. May we also pass on the words of Jesus and the love of him to our children and grandchildren. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, you inspired your servant Jeremiah to proclaim your word amid the lies of false prophets. Where there is falsehood and lies in our culture, we ask that your power restore truth in our culture. And we pray that you would build up your church upon the foundation of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God Almighty, behold our nation and all those in authority, police and fire, congressmen and congresswomen, governors, senators, and our president. In your mercy, lead them to the truth of your holy word, so that wisdom, not selfishness, will rule our land. Grant that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Well, Lord, we grant, we would ask that you grant healing to the sick, especially those who are suffering with cancer. We think of Patty and Harold and Pam, Linda and Jennifer Hecker and Betty Gibson. We ask that you would give physicians wisdom and researchers and skill to bring healing to Brooke Wilson, Norma, Beanie, Doris, Tom, Levita, Marjorie, Phyllis, Winnie, Hollis, and Marge. Give them a, a patience to await your deliverance and peace at the last. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, your son promises divisions even as he promises salvation. Inspire our hearts to prize our baptism and the communion of the saints above all the relations in this world, even as we fervently pray and strive for the salvation of those we know and love. Lord, in your mercy, God of our fathers, you bless your church with the enduring witness of your saints who now rest from their labors. We remember John Luke Acey, who is celebrating in your glorious presence. Give peace and comfort to Carol and their children as we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Grant that we too will hold our faith in Christ now and to life's end as did John. Lord, in your mercy. In your hand, O Lord, we commend all of whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of Almighty God into your hearts and into your homes. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our closing hymn.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.